What's going on? This is 1407 Gray Malkin Lane, the living memory of the X-Men. Don't let anyone tell you different. I'm here with my man, my man, MJ. Uh, we are going to be talking X-Men this week. We got, like, we had a lot. Of, first of all, how you doing, man? How's it going? How's everything? I'm doing good, dude. Yeah. I'm doing good. Very well. Okay. Got a good week here. Nice, nice. Now you're looking spiffy. You can get, you're looking all I, nice. Got the hair, you know. I'm trying to grow my hair. I'm trying to grow it out, but it's at like an awkward stage where I, where it just like doesn't do anything well. Oh God, that's that's whack. Um, no, where so we got Marauders. We have Judgment Day. We also got the reveal of uh, of SOS, the Sins of Sinister. Which one do you want to talk about first? <laughs> Oh, so wait, wait, I I don't I don't think I read Sins of Sinister. Oh no no no, no no no! It was just released. Like the um, it was it's not a book. Oh, oh the of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. That sounds really cool. Um, so let's go. Uh, probably Marauders first, I guess. Okay. All right, we got Marauders. Um, I like Steven Orlando. He's a, he's okay. Yeah. I. I I do like the fact that he's showing that Xavier is a good father. Very good. This is the best light we have seen Xavier in a long time. Right? And it's like, it's not... It's not and he's so calling her his daughter. And from my understanding, they've never met. Yeah, exactly. He's never met her. Yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah. it was like uh, they took the egg... Well, because, you know, they confirmed that the Shi'ar lay eggs. So they just... No, no. Or they saved his sperm or something. They needed to be there. Like, okay, let's, we have our eggs. We just like. <sighs> it's a little confusing. But yeah. Somehow. No, 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 they're birds. Movie. That's the only way I could, that's the only way I could yeah. like, imagine. The Shi'ar are birds. But... She might have been grown in like a tube or something. She, I know that. Yeah. She was an egg, though. Know. Like, yeah, she, yeah. Um, but I love that even. He considers her his daughter, even though he never really met and whatnot. He's proud of her. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's, it's good. It's good for Xavier. Yeah, good. I like it. I, um, so um, I love this fight between Exodus and Holocaust. All right. If you get the chance, read the original because it was epic. I was a kid reading this. I'm like, this is huge. Like, so one thing that confused me is Holocaust always that big? Yes, he's always that big. And then so they, like, they that he, suit, he, he seems bigger because he's in a he's in a suit. Like, right, uh, but they, they imply he killed Nova, uh, 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 Xavier's sister, and then he, he swells up, and then when they drain her, I, I'm a little confused of that. Like, right? Because like, they 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 probably he killed her and like he got all big i, I didn't know if he was always that big because then yeah. he like shrink down in size at the end of the comic uh okay i'm looking at it oh well yeah the the suit that he's in is big think like juggernaut big and that he's always it may have gotten a little bit bigger but like not much well maybe it swells up with like psionic energy he right. absorbs right yeah because he's he's basically chamber like he's just oh. like oh that's oh. not real like even like the brain inside like the skull like that's all like yeah. bionically projected that's all him oh he's not okay. dead he's like a li he's a living uh living telepath ghost and who is his parentage again they said like Ap apocalypse uh -huh. apoc which actually it makes a lot of sense because chamber is one of apocalypse's like descendants Oh, that's, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Go back and read, like, New X-Men. Um, oh, I, I remember the Chamber connection. You told me that before, but yeah. uh, now I'm seeing, like, yeah, somewhere in his genetics is that predisposition to that power. And is this not a retcon so. for Nemesis? Huh? Is this not a retcon for Nemesis that he's a child of Apocalypse? No, no. This is always the thing. Oh, uh, always the see, um, when, uh, when Nemesis first appeared back in Age of Apocalypse, uh, he crossed over to our timeline because after the X-Men and their allies, like, just, they undo 
they did a Back to the Future. Mm. And so everything's back to normal, but like in the middle of like everything changing, uh, Nemesis, uh, X Man, Sh- Sugar Man, Dark Beast. Oh, my. If you ever get a chance, look up Dark Beast. That guy's a motherfucker. I've seen lots of him. He's, he's awesome. He's awesome. I would love to see what he'd he be doing right now. I've, I, like, it was the biggest theory in the original House of X. The biggest theory was he, he was that Beast, but Xavier didn't resurrect Beast. He resurrected Dark Beast. Or uh, check this out. How about this? What if Dark Beast killed Hank McCoy and impersonated him? I love it. No, because like this, because this would be the second time this happened, and nobody mm-hmm. noticed. That's funny. At, at this point, I think it's more that this Hank McCoy is becoming a different version of a dark beast. Yeah, he's doing everything for the right reasons. He's not being arrogant about it. He's uh, he's not. Well, mm, they kind it's of still like, like he's like reason. like he doesn't care about human life. Well. I wouldn't go that quite that far. He's just he's accepting human casualties. Yeah. He's like I don't think he wants the, the extinction of the human race. He's just he's has a job to get done. Right. You know. He's like Captain America or Nick Fury. Uh, yeah. What's the I'm difference? so interested. I'm a little disappointed. Um not not that I'm trying to skip to the next comic, but in the next comic they have the um the judgments of a lot of people. Mm-hmm. We were promised the X Men were going to get judged first. That's what he said. The X we're going to judge the X Men first. That's what the Celestial said, I believe. But they haven't really. You judge Captain America first. We're not going to into that. But yeah, I yeah, am really yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I forgot I'm about that. I'm curious to what. Uh, so who are we talking about right now? Fuck. Um, right. Marauders. We're just talking about like. I just. I'm really digging this team though. What do you think mm-hmm. about the team? Oh, I, I love them. Uh, well, it's it's a little hamstringed with um, Psylocke on it. I don't think she's needed. Um, um, but yeah, I love the team. Uh, I hope we get more space stuff. I don't know if we're going to get more space. The Marauders are like, they go find lost mutants. And now they, well, they're not done yet. They have to find a way to like bring back this mutant. They're going to need some type of technology. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The uh, the one and the at the end. Uh, a little disappointing. Cerebra, but that was no, the... no, no, no. Um, so Cerebra, we don't know how she's coming back in time, or right. or we don't know how she's involved at all. She's probably coming back in time from twenty ninety nine, uh, or she's just spawning on this timeline in some new way. But what I'm talking about is the um the person in the time drive from one billion from two billion BC. Right, right, the one with all the mutants. Yeah, yeah. That one's supposed to have one mutant in it from two billion years ago. The last, they call him the survivor of Threshold. Right. Um, that implies one person, which I'm disappointed at. We were promised a bunch that they've, they've, they've multiple times said the survivors and the, the first generation, which yeah. implies multiple. Right. Um, but now it seems like, no, they're, 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 they're right. hamming themselves with one person in the time drive. At some point, we're going to get that person released. It's but what, what's interesting, though, is it might be a time travel. Like, it might be uh, Kate Bishop. No, Kate no, Bishop. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Kate. Krakoa no, might have went back her. in time. Oh, wait. No, they did. No, no, I'm sorry. They, they got her back. Krakoa might have went back in time to two billion years ago and um, established Threshold. Yeah, I could see that. And if that's the case, the survivor of Threshold could be Wolverine, could be Kid Omega, could be Kate Bishop. Oh, no, not Kate Bishop. I don't know what her name. What did you What did you think about that? This callback at the near the end, where um, where um, uh, the Fang, the war he where um, Dakin cool. acquired acquired the uh, the Fang. Like Wolverine kind of stole it, but like. Now Dakin or Akiro, he's earned it. Like he's he's done something his father couldn't do. It's actually one of the few old panels I've read. I've actually read that old comic, uh, and it's uh it's kind of a throwaway thing. I never went anywhere. I never really met much. Wolverine almost immediately throws away the Fang outfit. He just adopts the yellow, right? Uh, but he almost immediately throws away that outfit and 
makes his own outfit with the color yellow. Right. Um, but it is a big thing that that's where he got yellow from. Originally, it was yellow because he wanted to be the target. He wanted everyone to target him first, and they reckon it being the Shi'ar lupus colors, which is cool. Do you think um, Dakin's going to take on the name Fang? I could see it. I it's it fit it fit him better. He needs a name. Like, like nobody likes the. Apparently, it's bad to say Dakin. So, but okay, fine. Change the name. I don't care. I mean, like I well, didn't. Need, like, the idea is that mutants have mutant names. What is his mutant name? Is it Dakin? Uh, his mutant name was Dakin, but he can change. What is it Japanese or something? Uh, it, I think it, I think it's like a racial epithet. I'm gonna look it up. Okay, maybe it's Japanese for wolf. I don't know. All right, Dakin means. Come on. Uh. Hmm. Okay, in Japanese it means mongrel or cur. It means like you're calling somebody a dirty dog. Like a barbarian. Yes. Savage. A, a yeah. feral. Fang. Um, uh, if yeah. it. I, now that I know Dakin is Japanese for something, I, I, I want him to keep Dakin. Yeah, Dakin's his mutant name for sure. For sure. Yeah, right? Yeah. It has to. Yeah. Like, all right, here's something I always wanted to see. Like, I wanted to see Dakin and Young Cable hang out. Because mm. think about it. Both, like, their dads low-key kind of hated, hated each other. But imagine if they were, like, best friends. Like, Young Cable looked up to Dakin. Where have I seen that preview? That Not, not with uh, Dakin. He's going to be hanging out with, um, J- uh, with uh, James Proudstar. Oh, yeah. X-Men Red? Is it X-Men Red? Well, that's um, I apparently, know. Dakin is going to be on a mission with James Proudstar. Cool. Not Thunderbird. The yeah, yeah, one. Warpath. Yeah, Warpath. Warpath. Um, kind of a similar ish thing. Eh, similar, not, other not they're really. different. No, I say no. like. I would yeah, say you want Warpath to bother it. His ass. Yeah. Warpath, Warpath, whoop his ass. The only, like, because like Warpath has more experience. He's stronger. He can fly. Um, like it depends if Dakin has adamantium at not. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> very true. Very true. I I liked Marauders. It was dope. It was it was cool. It was a good one. I'm a little curious where they're going from now. I want more space because they have a spaceship. Right. But like mutants, their whole idea is saving mutants. So like, there are some mutants in the galaxy they could go save, but Earth has a lot of mutants that need saving. So. Yeah. All right. So, uh, SOS. All right. So, yeah. all right. So, basically, according to CBR, uh, CB, um, Sins of Sinister, Sinister is supposed to be the, oh, uh, sorry, where Sinister wins. They're kind of teasing it. It's going to be like a Sinister version of Age of Apocalypse. Well, it's confusing because I read the article and it implies that they throw him in the pit to prevent him from restarting the universe. So right. they know. The Quiet Council finds out that he has Moyer copies. Yep. Um, but then he wins. So yeah, I guess I guess he becomes king of hell and somehow that helps him win. Um, no. Or, or or the Quiet Council doesn't know that you can't be, go to the pit no more. Basically, the pit might be like you go in the pit and you're immediately ejected out because Cypher, Krakoa, we learned in um, Sabretooth that Krakoa refuses anyone ever being in the pit again. It has too much effect on Krakoa as a whole. It's I, affecting okay. his psyche. I get, um, I get that. I get that. They literally forged... In, Sabretooth literally created a hell realm inside of Kirkoa's mental state, and he hates it. And so right. he's like, no more. He's like, no one's ever going inside of this hellscape ever again. Absolutely. Um, I get that. Um, yeah, but now we've got in, but now Sabretooth and the Exiles, that does not sound pretty. Mm-hmm. Sabretooth, 
like Sabretooth to me is kind of like the Eric Cartman of the uh, of the X Men. He's is, he's dangerous. Who is that? Sabretooth, Sabretooth is dangerous, but like really, he's so goddamn stupid. It's unbelievable. Well, he's smart now that he has the council going on in his mind, which no, I don't understand. He's always been that way, it. though. Like, I mean. He's always been that guy. He's always been capable of pulling off a really cunning plan. It's just, most of the time, he's just stupid. <laughs> yeah, he's still going to be stupid. I feel like the feral instinct inside that council is the most powerful one. It kind of has, like, the last say. Right. Um, right. What's up, Corey? How you doing, buddy? Hey, man. I'm fine. Cool. All right, so we're, we're talking talking about the uh, sins of Sinister. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what, we think, what we think it might be. I'm a little up. I'm. I'm not. I don't really love the idea of Sinister winning like a whole series about that because we already kind of have that going on. I kind of want to move past that. When we got rid of Moira, I thought we finally cemented, you know, actual stakes. But now, now we have Sinister, so I'm a little worried about it. Uh, oh, apparently we know he it has time. clones of Moira, right? And stuff, yeah. and the council's gonna say. We put you in timeout for five goddamn minutes, and now we just unearth this. Good God, mm-hmm. it's crazy. I, I I'm gonna send you the I'm gonna send you the uh, the thing the the announcement. I, but, saw, I think I got it. It's uh, it's 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 it looks really good, and I, I'm hyped for it. It's just that um, I don't like the idea of Moira to begin with, and then it was worse that now Sinister has it. Sinister is now Moira. He has the ability to reset the universe at a whim, and it makes you don't have any stakes. And it means that everyone in the Quiet Council is playing five steps behind him, and it's just it's not what I wanted. Wait, 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 wait. I have a question, real quick. All right, so. Moira is now essentially a robot, right? Yeah. Okay. An Omega Sentinel. She doesn't know. She doesn't know that Sinister has uh, uh, clones of her. So if she, if she was to die, she's gone. So what if they? What if the Council put together X Force and said, "Okay, your job is to take out Moira through any means." It's like, oh, what about her turning herself back? We are already taken care of that. Take out Moira. You take out a villain. Because there are other Moira clones. I'm confused. What are you asking here? No, I mean, like, could they do that? Someone would make Charles go, but no, she's still in there. No, I'm, I'm... yeah. The Quiet Council never votes unanimously on anything and they've proven themselves to make really bad decisions. So yeah, they would they would vote on that. Um who would who would go with where though? I think mm-hmm. Destiny before it, Mystica before it, Exodus before it, Shaw before it. Probably none of the original X-Men. Well, Maybe Storm. I think Storm before it. Depends. We didn't really get Storm's reaction to the whole curing mutants. We, we just know their aftermath, and she's like, just look, you know, cold. She didn't look well, mad, but wait, we don't also, know the reaction. Also, like, I don't know if you guys noticed this. Have you guys always noticed that anytime they have like a really horrible, like a really bad decision, they always have make Emma like something like like if, if she were to go for it, it would make her look really bad. But if she doesn't go for it, it'd make her look weak. They always have her abstain. Uh, that's just a problem. That they, they, the writers want the. I, I feel like that's just a problem that they're forcing characters. Like there's times where Storm has voted no in moments where I believed 100 percent she would have voted yes. Right. So they're just trying to make discontent on that council, and they they're just forcing it. Sometimes it's crazy, but yeah, sense of the sinister is going to be dope. I like, I, I want to see what it is. Like, I'm hyped for it because sinister has been like the most consistent X Men villain for the pat for the better part of three years. 
Bro. Like, you know he's up to something. I like him losing more than I like him winning, though. When he's losing, he panics, and he, he becomes panics. really clever. Like, when he defeated Tarn. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't defeat Tarn, though, but he won. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's, that's true. See? So he lost, but he won. And so I want him to lose, and and that makes him win because he's so clever and he's so smart. And and Sunspot you know, is more clever because of what he did to Iska. That's more it's clever true too. But but and she but, nearly erotic asphyxiated him. But you, but we got to remember though. What you got to think about this? What would the world be like under Sinister? Everyone would that. look like him. No, no, I mean, like, what he, like, seriously, let's, what would he really do with that? We've seen, um, we've seen two timelines where he truly won, I believe, and both of them, he just kind of becomes like a Crimson Crusader and going around the universe collecting DNA. He the doesn't, high evolutionary? Like the high evolutionary. He doesn't become an emperor. He becomes a traveling warlord uh, when, when he wins. Seems like that's his natural progression. I, just, I don't know. Like, I just wonder what he would do. I just want to see what he would do. Well, actually, no. Now that I'm thinking about it, no. So the, we have two timelines. We have the Crimson Crusader, and then we have something called like the Diamond Empire. Right. So he does. Have, he does have an empire in one timeline. I think. I think it's called like the Diamond Empire. Okay. Which, Involved, involved, you know, the diamond on his forehead, most likely. Cool. All right. So, Judgment Day. Thoughts? How are we feeling? Oh yeah. Really, uh, this for me, cool. how every because I only stepped into this when um, Theranos' grand uncle uh, pulled the injustice move on uh, Magneto. And we saw that he survived, and Magneto had the face I only saw in Inferno when Jonathan Hickman told him, "Hey, here's Nimrod. He just killed Xavier. Go ape shit." <laughs> Fair. Uh, so this comic, I really liked it until I found out that I have to question almost everything in it now. Uh, so, like, the fact. So I don't have to explain the entire comic, uh, but. Uh... Uh, which is just how they say people. things and it, it doesn't happen or I uh, yeah I don't know do we want to explain it all or yeah, yeah go for it man go for it all right um, so basically uh it starts with um it starts with Captain America being judged by the celestial right yeah we now, talked about this earlier yeah sinister has a smile on the entire time so it's entirely possible this is not a true celestial judgment, which I'll be disappointed. I hope this is like an act. I know it's still a celestial judging. and We don't really have to take it seriously, but I want it to have at least some value in a judgment. And he judges Captain America as being unworthy. He, he calls him a failure and finds him guilty. And then the whole world panics because if you find Captain America guilty, how could anyone be not guilty? Uh, interesting enough, he then goes on to... Um, fine no so so then um it goes to like captain america uh <clears throat> tony stark and um whatnot coming up with an idea to destroy the celestial um they, they decide it's too dangerous because if, uh, if the celestial blows up it'll take like a third of the planet with it right sinister then i don't know how he does it but he like opens up his mind to destiny for some reason, not like yeah, Xavier. yeah. Tell tell what they're gonna do. But he yeah. opens up to destiny, not Xavier, not Gene. I don't know. So like, no, 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 no. Xavier was de- already dead, so it really didn't matter. But Gene, and at least a telepath. Destiny is not telepathic. I don't know how how opening. No, 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 no. Like like Sinister is a telepath, oh, so he shit, can okay. reach out. Sorry, okay, you, you know, right. you know, Sinister. He likes to put himself with all the upgrades. You're right. You're right. I didn't, he yeah, reached right. out to her, and mm. like, because really, do you really think Jean Grey would let Sinister in her head? <laughs> yeah, good, good, good point. She was like, <laughs> "No, you, you don't let him in my mind. Why? Because he's a psych. Because he's a sick ass weirdo." So yeah. it turns out that Sinister basically built the Death Star plans into. The celestial there's a small hole 
that he built into it that that at the right time that hole will open up and if you send a telepathic bomb through it it'll kill it right um, it's a death star <laughs> <laughs> you basically you just gotta do the run on the death star and hope this eternals so basically all the eternals because you're attacking a celestial they have to obey one of the laws of an eternal and as protect all celestials but if I was Icarus, wouldn't I imprison myself so I didn't turn on my friends in the middle of battle? It was a little weird. Uh, but Icarus little can little break thing. out of anything. He's got super mean strength, right? Put him on the other side of the world, so it took him a little while to get there. There's things you could have done. Basically, they do this run on the Death Star. They succeed, blow up the Celestial. Everyone dies. Turns out, didn't actually happen. Celestial was testing everybody. And um, and then he finds pretty much everybody in, in company guilty, but not everyone because he, so he finds Emma Frost guilty. He finds Steve Destiny Rogers Mystique. guilty. Who? Uh, Rogers. Yes, yeah, Steve Rogers. Destiny Mystique finds them guilty. Um, I think that's it for now. He finds Crow innocent. Right. Which is interesting. The leader of the Deviants. Right. Finds him innocent. Um so where are the what so Xavier so they're all dead? Where where they go? No, 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 no. They're inside the mind of the celestial. Yeah, so celestial just tricked them all into thinking they all died and blew up half the world. So all the humans on the planet now think the mutants sacrifice a third of the planet to kill the celestial. Um, and the mutants have resurrection, so they could all come back. Yet all of the, one third of the planet is dead, so they're going to hold some bad feelings towards that. Um, Xavier, Xavier is dead because it seems like he was succumbed to the uni mind. Xavier was having a one v one with um, with uh, Icarus's dad. Um, not 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 worth remembering his name. Uh, Xerxes or some shit. I can't remember his name. Right. Um, Basically, he had a 1v1, and then it was really confusing. We don't know how Xavier dies because uh, um, Icarus stabs uh, Xerxes in the back of the head but doesn't kill him. He just puts him in like an animated state where he cannot fight no more, but he won't die and be resurrected killing a human. So why did Xavier die? I guess there's more people in the uni mine. Um, it's, it's unclear. We were told the uni mine was shut down, though. Icarus shut down the uni mine by stabbing him in the back of the head. So I don't know why Icar I don't know why Xavier is dead. Uh, also, like the the six perspectives, I really want to know what where that uh, one British guy's head is at. Like he doesn't like mutants for really no reason. It comes off as hating. They're just comedic value. I don't know. That's, that's oh, just stupid. That's weird. I don't even know how they're alive because the, all of the Hex have died. Each one of the Hex has died, and we were told that, well, at least we were shown that when one of the Hex died, one of the six humans died. Uh, that all the all of the Hex have died at this point, and not and not all six of them have died. So six other humans around the planet have died because of the Hex died. Yeah, or no, no, it hasn't. Been, no, they haven't been resurrected yet. No, uh, the, no, you're right. The it ended with. The, fir the first one that died got resurrected. We don't know if the rest have been resurrected. You're correct. Right. Uh, because that, that one guy died. That one guy. My was resurrected already, though. Right. Um, uh, so it goes on. Um, basically, um, Cersei has a plan of her own. She. Um, please tell me it. Please tell me it involves her grinding people to nubs. No. Not necessarily not, though. So basically, somehow, she paid Jack of Thieves or whatever, the Jack Assassin, the Eternal Assassin, who apparently can be bought out or paid with favors. Not going to say what type of favors. Hold on. She's she's stopping, stopping Thanos' granduncle? No, no, no. no actually, so it's also Druig's granduncle. Uh, you know how uh, they... Uh, Thanos called him grandfather. Uh, yeah. Druid called Druid him grandfather too. That that is interesting. Um, but no, I, I'm talking about the assassin, not not um, not Uranus. There's an assassin called like Jack of Knives. 
Yeah, you know? yeah, the guy who was with the who was with the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, but he he implies that he can he'll do anything for a price. Now he doesn't say money, so a price could be favors, and you know Cersei is a hot chick. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe they can, they can get him to do something. They have something he wants. But the fact is, he's not loyal. So um, Cersei uses him Maverick. To, to break into the Eternal Machine, and then she gets into the Phantom Zone, which I it doesn't have a name. Should have a name. Probably has a name, but it's not rememberable, like the Phantom Zone. So I call it the, the Negative Phantom Zone. zone. Probably Negative Zone. Um, but he gets into the Phantom Zone. Negative Zone is taken. Annihilus's realm is the Negative Zone. Yeah, but you got to remember though, they uh, built a prison in in the Negative Zone. True, true. true. Oh, it, it, okay. it could be right. It could be right. But regardless, she breaks into the machine. She breaks into the phantom zone or, or negative zone, whatever, into the prison. And I thought they were going for Thanos. I thought to have Thanos fight Uranus. Badass. Yeah, uh, but no, it turns out she's going to free Star Fox. Harry Styles. Yeah. I still want to see that family, uh, that family dinner. So if you uh, do a mutant machine of say, uh, core the burning heart, um, think and Star Fox, all three together could like create like a technology that could like amplify each other and send his telepathic because Star Fox is limited in range. Right. Well, and and isn't Star isn't Eros? The Eternal who never applies himself and he's got like atrophied powers and he only uses his powers for, for stumping. Love. For love. So basically they tell him that the oh, world is being, stumping. For stumping. They, they tell him the world is being judged and he says, I have the perfect plan. He's like, all the world needs is love. And he gives like a really creepy smile. <laughs> I, I think so, I know what he's about to do though. Yeah, he's gonna mind control gonna the world. Everybody in the world love you. Yeah. Oh God, it's gonna be like that. Whatever. So Rick and Morty, with the uh, with the toxins and it. it, it <laughs> oh, no, it, no, it's gonna be where where they're gonna have to bring the Max label back for the final issues because every one of the characters, not will the just... boys. <laughs> No, every character they're gonna be rolling and writhing like you know little, like vibrating bits of gelatin on a speaker. That is really that, that's graphic. Yeah. Well, it's I said in, it and don't edit it out. I can't. <laughs> I would. I don't believe in censorship. Yeah. Man, sure, yeah. Hey, kids will learn something from this. No, I do no. think this would be a good redemption think, for Star Fox if it succeeds. Um, yeah. Was he wearing lipstick though? He's, he's, Celestials You're gonna have anything. to make him look and dress a bit like Harry Styles too. Now. No, oh come on. Okay, really, it, does, it doesn't bother me. I'm just like, okay, all right, let's do this. I want to see where so, this goes. You're okay with this with an eternal creating. Like world destroying machines, but lipstick that that's too far. <laughs> we all have we all there are some things that I would that what you cannot let stand. <laughs> you cannot let stand. And plus, come on. It's the Eternals. Who cares? Silver said it last week. No one gives a shit about the Eternals. No one has ever really given it a shit about the Eternals. People who still care about Jack Kirby care. And, want and, to and most of them are dead. Well, they're probably trying to make Eternals more relevant by introducing X-Men, involving them with the Deviant Gene. Uh, another good theory is that it's all revolving around mutants being introduced in the MCU through the Eternals. So trying to get Eternals some more love. Um, but I, 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 no. I kind of disagree that they're not. Uh, I like um, the Eternals are kind of they're not interesting characters, but I, I like them as a whole. Hold on. Like Icarus has no defining only like only like only like um, Fina and Cersei have like defining traits, and that's just like sexuality. Everyone else is just like a robot. Yeah, they're because they are robots. The thing with like, but. MJ, 
like you gotta understand like this is part of the Mar- Marvel the Marvel Studios wants the Eternals to be a thing so what's the best what's the, what they do they put them up against the X-Men I said this last week the Avengers when their big movie came out they were doing a whole thing with the X-Men when the Eternals were having their thing with were, uh, were trying to be the new mutants pardon the pun uh, like when they had that show the humans were went up against the X-Men they made it a whole plot point of a series mm-hmm. and um, I'm just saying like this is just part of the Marvel like the X-Men are the measuring six success You, the X-Men will put them over it's the wrestling thing if you like Randy Orton uh, losing to I don't know. I feel like they're still hitting all the right notes. Uranus was as intimidating as we needed in this event. Druig is a perfect villain. I'm liking it. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. I love it too. I love it. Like I want to see what Starfire, Star Fox, what Star Fox does. I want to see speaking what he of, does. I'm all for it. Starfire, Speaking of Starfire, we saw Icarus rip him in half. Yeah, jeez. In this comic, in this comic, hey, used to her, point. Hey, her name is Firestar, man. It's Firestar. Oh, Firestar, Firestar. Yeah, you see. Domino Icarus got ripped, ripped, ripped in half. half too. Do you think she's alive? I don't know. Domino? Like. Is she- no, uh, Starfire. Her name was Firestar. Firestar. Is she alive? <laughs> no. I think she's alive. She yes, remember, everything we, saw, everything we oh, saw, everything we, everything we saw. Uh, you're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. So everybody's okay. You're they, right. You're right. You're they, right. You're right. They brought everybody back by not it, by it, bringing it, everybody back. <laughs> That's so bad. It's, that's disappointing because I'm so badass seeing Icarus just pick her up and rip her in half. Like, I mean, Icarus just, oh, ripped who in half? Uh, Icarus ripped Star, Starfire. Fire Star! What is wrong with you? We we and we do not have an omniverse crossover yet. That is my dream fanfic to cook to cook up. Read Amazing X Men if you want some really good Fire Star. If Fire they, Star MJ, say if, with me. Fire <laughs> Star. Thank you. All right, you're just gonna have to get your belt out for this. It's, <laughs> I, I, I think I might have to get you. Yeah. Like that's Angelica Jones. She's one of the original Hellions. Like yeah, and, and, and she's the one. That, she's one of the most famous victims of Emma Frost. Who, Who voiced Richard? her in that original cartoon? I have no, no idea. I just I know the guy who was Fred many years for Scooby Doo voice Iceman. I do not know. Is she related to Jessica Jones? No. 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 The same name. Je- 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 so she she I guess it's related kind of to Angelica. Like, you know, Angelica there's... Jones was an Avenger. Yeah. And she was at the and she went to the Jean Grey school. People seem to forget that. <laughs> All I'm hearing is that she's a double agent. Traitor. She's not a cop, okay? <laughs> this is not a Leonardo DiCaprio departed moment. Ooh, what if it was, though? No, like, it's the, the, the it's a departed. Xavier is Jack Nicholson. Uh, hmm. Actually, that would make it Angelica Jones uh, Matt Damon. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, he's Matt David. Um, trying to think what you know. I jumped in at the last minute, so I'm like, what books did I read? Yeah, what um, books did you read? I still have i I still have Moon Knight on pre order. Um, I'm buying the deceased cycle, and bit by bit, um. Tom Taylor's like, I have the conclusion. Uh, it's called uh, Rise of the Undead Gods. Uh, 
bad news, the whole new Genesis family got the anti-life equation zombie virus. Oh, Jesus. And, DC, but... Are they always but, in danger? What? I would hate to live in the DC universe because at any point in time, some psychopath, some dummy, no, actually, worse, it's a dumb dumb comes around and like um, and destroys the universe. They have the ability to destroy the universe by well, yeah, by, and... by, by solving a simple by, by a math equation. Solving yeah, a math equation. If you remember you about that, if you remember the deceased volume one, uh, Dark Side and Decide Side were torturing cyborg by just taking him apart and doing everything oh they so cut, they're a robocop of him they really? cut they cut his tongue out to find the anti-life equation because they were convinced it was somewhere in victor's body wow they cut off the tongue of a black cyborg see racism that's what see? well but for some reason but they did the math wrong and there le- something happened in the lab. Dark side acts like he's like having a stroke or something because Dark side didn't do the math right. He zombified the anti life equation. Oh. So, literally, if, if you would be looking at your phone, you'd start walking dead sounds and you would be zomb- zombified. Dark side, leave it alone. <laughs> but at this point, there's a vaccine, so the the reconfigured heroes have now been vaccinating everybody, and they got a big they got a big preemptive strike in the first wait, issue. Wait, 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 how did this affect the rest of the universe? I'll tell you about that in in like another chat because we're on like the conclusion, and it's it's already been one. One mini series, two mini series, three mini series, four mini series, telling the story. You got a full on horseman right there. E- e- yeah, but um, Superman was zombified. He flew himself into the sun, and they got him, and they brought him back. And there was a nice scene where um, John gets wakes John. He comes to, and you know. He's got his boy, he sees his boy again, and John brings him back to his mom, who's the president of this new refugee earth of DC, <laughs> of DC, and it's, and uh, they see Brainiac ship coming, and they're like, oh my god, and they go in, uh, new Genesis community got to Brainiac and turned him into what happened to Vision. And Marvel zombies. I want to see a snarky version of a, of a DC movie, one where they talk. Where like, all right, just hear me out. Let's say Nightwing is, you know, in Bloodhaven doing his thing, doing the Nightwing thing, and then he see, and then he sees like some intergalactic thing going down, and he just goes, not again. Are just well, they're are like you know what I'm done. Like I am, like just just look kind of like a snarky, funny version where you're like, well, like, they're kind of doing that with the Harley Quinn TV show. That they, show like, sucks. That show sucks, bro. That is so bad. Harley's so obnoxious. Isn't that the point? No, it's not the point. I th- uh, they're. It makes me not like Poison Ivy, and I love Poison Ivy. It's not... Well, but isn't the point of that show is finding the truths to stretch humor out of? It's not supposed to be comic book accurate, right? No, I'm not saying it has to be comic book accurate. I just don't like Harley the person. I think that's the... I think that's the point. Like, you're not, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're supposed to like Titania too, because that's what they said. Well, that's what the actress said before she makes her debut in She Hulk. Like, you are going to find me very annoying. <laughs> well, well, she's really, well, if you ever seen that show, The Good Place, 
uh, it's kind of like like she's really funny. She could play off that. that oh type. yeah, I believe it. I think you know I've read Titania a bit in the books, and I know I know she could be funny. And uh, um, yeah. All right. There was uh, uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about. I don't about remember before. all the stuff I I I read. Work has been really bad, and so right. I I have no memory retention. But uh, MJ, you were saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, Judge me that. It's um, like do we want to speculate a little bit. Like who else is going to be like? Oh I don't know if it's right. Movie, um, but like who will be going to be judged? Maybe or I um, could see. I can see Black Panther being judged. Do you think guilty or innocent, though? Of what? We don't really know exactly. They haven't stipulated his his standards of being guilty or not guilty. Uh, it seems to be based off accomplishments because Crow is not a good guy, and he's being found innocent, whereas Captain America is being found guilty. So I think it's more about accomplishments. Have you held true to your beliefs? Right. Like for innocence... For, for instance, I think Storm is guilty, and I think Sinister is innocent. Yeah, I could see that. I could totally see that. I could see Cyclops being innocent. Xavier is. I don't know about Cyclops. Uh, no, Cyclops got everything he wanted. He got the family. He's a um, he no, got his wife. No, got his he kids. didn't get what he wanted. If he got, if he got his way. Babel would still be here. His not name is Kid Cable, man. Babel is the, uh, is a is a tower that Ra's al Ghul used. Cable and- Prime would still be Babel right now if Scott had his way. I'm not it doing- depends on whether or not. I think this is how I would I would I would argue it. It depends on whether or not the celestial holes. So Cyclops is supposed to keep all. He's supposed to keep mutants in check. He's the he's the Captain America of mutant kind. That's true. He has done that for Krakoa. All the villains are more or less in check. But would the Celestial put him in charge of the Arakans as well? Is he supposed to go to the Arakans and make them submit too? Like I was, I like I was part of the X Men. Not but uh, it's racial. The Iraq, in the Iraq. And the Iraqi kidnap, they can take care of themselves. That's their whole point. Seems to be along racial lines, though. Like, like the reason Crow is innocent is because he, he, he led his people to the the golden age of his people. Right. A new golden age, not, not another. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. He, yeah. Um. Crazy. Fantastic Four, probably. Uh, yeah. Um Doom will be found uh he'll be, Doom will be found uh guilty. Yeah, he hasn't done anything. He hasn't achieved his goals. I mean he was God King. But he you know he lost it, so that's a failure. No, I mean um, Yeah, he did lose it. No, but Reed will be seen as innocent. What about Apocalypse? I guess he achieved his goal in the end. Apocalypse and Genesis aren't coming back in this. They're off somewhere, and we're only going to see cameos in the experts department of their kids. I agree. I just think it's worth speculating. We're we're not going to see Big Blue Granddaddy. I'm sorry. (sighs) It's possible because everyone wants... Thanos versus Apocalypse. That's been a popular matchup in the in the fandom for years. Surprised no one's ever picked up on it. Oh yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be fun. Like, well, wait, who's I, older? I can see them becoming friends though. Well, who's older, Thanos or Apocalypse? Thanos, I think. The Eternals have been retconned to be a million years old. Apocalypse is like two thousand. <laughs> He's as old as ancient Egypt, so two or three thousand, give or take. Right. Three thousand, four thousand. Yeah, he's up. He's he's old. Yeah, because you know Jesus was around two thousand years ago, and Egypt was already a thing. Yeah. No. So, all right. So, MJ, uh, your speculation. Uh, 
you yeah, no, I, I think I said it right. I just said that. Um, uh, um, no, I, I said it right. Just that I think that. Uh, no, I don't think I speculated. No, um, no, I, I like Marauders better than I like Judgment Day this week. Yeah, that was that was interesting. I I did read this. I'm like, okay, Xavier. Although it's a high octane story, Xavier's with one of his kids. He was talking only normal, child, normal ish, and oh, um, I thought like Deathbird was like, okay, uh, click click, uh, where's my niece? <laughs> Here's my yeah. niece, and I'm like. Oh. Oh, sorry, I didn't, no, no, I, no, no, finish. I, sorry, um, Dokken nearly gutted somebody. No, but he, but he got that, but he got that Fang, uh, trophy. Yeah, that was like did. something Sabretooth had in like new many c- costumes. No, 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 no. This is from a, the alien race, though. Like this is like old Claremont X Men. All right, um, like you gotta go back. They confirmed that the symbiote has an X gene. That was interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, a symbiote got to hook onto Cassandra Nova, and I thought she would look way more terrifying than. Oh, she looks like uh, Michelle Williams in the first Venom movie. Previously, yeah. they said that that symbiote was a mutant, but I thought it was a mutant. Like Crow is a mutant, just a little different than his race. They might. This could mean that Crow has an X gene too. Maybe. A lot of um, things have an X gene. Yeah, uh, I thought it was red though. I thought the, the mutant symbiote was red. I don't know why it's black now. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. Uh, Carnage symbiote. So, all right, so next week, all right, so you guys, so next week we got uh, we got five X books coming out. Anybody know? Uh, let me, I'm pulling them up right here. Uh, uh, there's, there's one last thing that we should probably talk about real quick. We talked about before we we started yeah. the podcast that we forgot to mention is um there's seen it could be retcon it, well it could be this all illusion right but it seems like the deviants have an X gene yeah oh yeah definitely well isn't that the point deviant deviant gene well it was unclear whether or not mutants had a deviant gene or if deviants had an X gene you know what I mean like change people- deviants it's basically confirming that what makes them c- similar is the X gene. Deviants have an X gene. They pass through the gate of Krakoa. Mutant deviants. Um, people have been fuming about this online, coming up with all sorts of justifications, all sorts of head cannons. One of the most popular ones I've been seeing is that uh, they're claiming Emma invited them, and you and humans can pass through a gate if you're invited. So. Because she invited them, they could pass through the gate. No, the, the I haven't cases. heard of any of this stuff because all the student loan stuff is drowning out all of the other news in my end. All right, media. No, like with Emma, you go like you're right, MJ. You with Emma Frost, you always gotta like look at it twice because and not believe what you see because she'll. Yeah, if you come into her house. And you think you're gonna have a great evening? What really happened is you were just uh, walk around in circles in the front room for an hour. It's possible that Crow didn't know how the gate functioned and didn't realize that Emma had invited him, and that's why he could pass through the gate. The writer, though, maybe that's what the writer wants us to believe. But no, the writer want no, Maybe that is subtly what the writer wants us to believe. But the obvious thing the writer wants us to believe is what Crow says, and that is the reason I could pass through the gate is because we share the X gene. So that, that's been established. The only way you could pass through the gate, you know, uninvited is with an X gene. You could graft the X gene onto your body. You can um, hide inside of an X gene and stuff like that. You know, there's, there's things mutant, you can sneak in. Mutant other races, uh, in, mutant in, alien, in all species. I get it. I think I mean we've already seen that uh, a a, a version of that back in two thousand uh, when Chris Claremont first came back to the X Men, he introduced the concept of mutant scrolls. Yep. Like mutants yep. across the galaxy. 
I definitely want more alien mutants. That'd be awesome. I want uh, to people scrolls again. People really don't want like a good chunk of people don't want mutants to be related to deviants. I don't know why they don't want that. But it uh makes they sense, though. when when it does make sense to me. But the, to them though, they want when when Druig said there's a large amount of deviants on Krakoa, they want that to actually mean that Krakoa itself is the deviant and all the mutants are just being accidentally mixed in with it. Right. Which could be the case. We don't know the origin of Kokoa. He could be a, a deviant. Um, uh, a, 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 a land deviant? We just yeah. don't know his origin. Too mad at you, boring. Right. Um, so next week, we got Knights of X, the final issue. X Force. Fantasy 1000. Peter Parker is officially uh, 60 years old now. Yeesh. And still in great shape. You know we're going to yeah. get more Excalibur. <laughs> Come on now. No, yeah. Knights of X5. Uh, X-Force 31. This has been... I'm, I, I like this. I like this one. And X-Men 14. Yeah, X-Men, X-Force, Knights of X. I, um, the... The Thunderbolts is being re- reauthorized. Clint Barton's leading the a, a, a Thunderbolts team. That makes sense. Seems like right. Uh, so the you name three. What are the other two? Oh, X Force and uh, and X Men. Is that only three? Uh, Knights of X, X Force, X Men. Yes. Oh, so just three coming out next week. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, that sucks. Only one Judgment Day. No, no, they're all. I think they're all t- high in the Judgment Day. No, uh, that's what it says on League. Uh, X Force and X Men are tied to Judgment Day. They would have to. They would have to pause the whole storyline they're doing in X Force. Or, or they're doing. Or they're in the middle. Of, uh, or they mel- make it part of it. Yeah, they'd have to pause what they're doing in X Force and just be like, "Nope, Wolverine is not hunting down Kid Omega. He's not doing this. He's actually." But he is. Wolverine is in Judgment Day. But we're but, seeing... But, that, but we gotta remember though, he wasn't... That was a that was an illusion. No, but we saw him in a couple chapters ago. He tracked down Jack of... You know, he smelt the blood on Jack of Knives' blade oh, or whatever. Oh, right, right, yeah. Him, yeah. So he, he, he's in Judgment Day, so it doesn't make sense that he could be off on a mission on X-Force. So X-Force has to take place either before or after. I say after because it's the same with uh, Magic. Magic's blade is black, not gold. So right. it takes place before Judgment Day. Or her comics or take place after Judgment Day. Uh, the New Mutant comic takes place after Judgment Day. Which implies they win, I guess. Yeah. Uh, if they don't have uh, before and after this. But wait a second. Is it like the titles at the end of each of the X-Verse books, is that literally their lame excuse for this happened before this boxes on each page? No. Well, kind of sometimes it is relevant, but but uh, it has, so far they have not explained why where, where New Mutants and X-Force take place in the timeline. Yeah, I think they would say, well, it's your job to read all that and figure it out for yourself. That's right. It's cool afterwards at some point magic is going to summon her blade and it's going to be gold and we're like okay so her events took place between this and this um kid omega will return at some point and we'll be like okay so this took place between this and this right you know what see all right all right i kind of have an announcement to make you guys Mm -hmm. i'm going to actually uh, date the entire X Men continuity from <laughs> Uncanny to X Men Now, all of it. Because I saw Jordan White said that Cyclops and the original X Men are still like in their 20s. I'm like, since when? They're like in their 30s. Yeah, like literally, if we like. Like literally, if if we had control over the head cannon, no, 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 this isn't head cannon. I don't use head. Oh, cannon. 
But I, I just piece things together. Is this guy this interpreting movie. their age in the books? Oh, yes. No. I can do it. I can do it. Gene and the original X, they're all. And you can, and you can get very close. You're not going to get 100%. In no, my I, head, they're like, they're like almost as old as my parents, mid to late. Mid to late forties, early fifties, to me. No, what, so too many. Oh, that's too old. Okay, that's. There, there, there's so many contributing factors here. Like they've been dead at points, and then resurrected. So you got a minus a couple of years. There's been times where they've been flooded with phoenix energy. Am I to believe the phoenix energy did not de-age in five years? It's the fucking phoenix. But also, know? I can uh, with that. Also. Those are things I'm going to uh, factor into it, but I'm also going to factor into like um, series, like <coughs> like arcs. Okay. Um, what what? Okay. All right. So if um, let's say I, if I was uh, trying to track X of Swords, a lot of that hat they explicitly said all that happened in a week. But mm -hmm. uh, but in our but in our perspective, that was like three to four months. Mm -hmm. So, like I, I'll take that into account. Like, okay, Wolverine, like Wolverine's in the middle of an eight issue arc. All that happened in one day. I, I think that's that that is still important to, to to keep in consideration. More importantly, though, would be like the times the comics reference real world events. Right, no, really, because like we hardly ever get. Sometimes we see a newspaper; we'll have a date on it. That's very rare. Right. Uh, more likely, we'll see a speech or tr Trump or or, 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 or so, like some sort of a um, like logo from like a contemporary. Yeah, yeah, I know. What you're some COVID references, you know, shit like that. Yeah, um, I, I wanna, that's my that's my um, thing, though. I want to. I want to show that I want to be judge worthy by your by the celestial. I want to complete my goal. I would love to know what dates particular events took place on, um, and and the rough ages of people, especially the younger people. I want to know like more mostly. I'm gonna you know I want I want to know who I can uh, uh, fanfic with. You know. Okay. All <laughs> like, right. All right. Here's it. Okay. Who is at twenty three. Old X enough that I can stand pick with? I don't X know. X23 is about 19. Okay, so it's close. See, that's why I need to know. Like, like, right, like, but like, like off, off the top of my head, I know how old these characters are. looks like she's 17, but okay, my then give me like, the eight. All, all right, then, McGarroy, give us the age range of all of Logan's kids. Okay, uh, Gabby is eight. Uh, Akiru. Uh, Doctor. Docking. He's like 26. And but no, he'd be wouldn't, he's young. Wouldn't he be early 30s? No. He's bro, he's mid to late 20s. So would, would Gabby be eight, but in an older body? Her body is not eight. So like is there maybe her mind is eight? And is yeah, her, her mind is eight. eight yeah, her mind is eight. And Laura is 19. Like if you're going with the original X Men, Scott, Jean, Archangel, and Beast are all 37 years old. Does X two twenty three have a similar thing though, where her body is a little older than her mind? Like, did, did they no, rapidly that, develop her body at all? No, they no. they didn't rapidly age them at all in any. No, not like that. Um, because remember she aged during the um when uh she was in the vault with Sink. Right, but I, I know she was born a child. Like they 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 yeah they started them as an infant. I just thought maybe the just gestation I know it's a weird word, gestation period between like one and like twelve, maybe that rapidly grows for that clone. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Well I, I, well I, 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 the healing factor the healing factor does de age you a little bit. So like well, do you think the healing factor would age you though a little bit? Like you, since you're no, healing, no, because no, at uh, Wolverine's like two hundred years old, but he looks like he's like thirty something, thirty forty. 
Right. All right, Corey, give me another one, man. I know you. I know you got one. All right. Uh, the one I mentioned was uh, Pixie. I she oh, looks Pixie. seventeen. But I think oh, she's like twenty. She is like twenty two. I think. She's getting in, she's getting involved in orgies, so she has to be older than eighteen. She's yeah. twenty. Yeah. No, like she was one of the younger one of the younger new mutants, and a lot and a lot of the a lot of the uh, new X Men, they're like early to early to mid twenties right now. All right, so technically, all of us would be would be in the new mutants age range. Well, taking you out of the equation, maybe. Um, uh, actually, okay. All right, so if we're going to go with new, the New Mutants, they're like early, th- they're about early 30s. Yeah, so MJ, MJ and I's age. Right. Um, so the older, then... The older X-Men, they're about like late 30s, early 40s. All right. And then the Rasputin, how, how about the Rasputin siblings individually? Okay, Ileana is 20... Two. Okay. Uh, well, well, twenty-two body, but like a fifty-year-old mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A uh, colossus is thirty-four. A giant, just giant, thirty-four-year-old. And um, and Mikhail, he's a uh, he's like forty-three. Because like. Oh. Because you, you got to remember, like with Col- I don't count him because I don't I haven't met him yet. Oh, uh, but books. like Mikkel was already when we first met Colossus, like Mikkel was already a cosmonaut, and like at a Colossus was like eighteen years old when he and Ileana was like four. They must Whoa, have only killed, that's... probably only killed a father or something. Wow, Mister and Mrs. Rasputin, way to go for. Spacing out these kids really bad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right. Probably. Um. It's so, not- re- so really, all the 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 inaugural X class is all the same age. Not. Yeah. Because you gotta remember. You well, no, no, no. Except for Iceman. Iceman is thirty-five. The fact is, they were. Uh, they were sixteen. Uh, what do, you, what do you call those schools uh, that you go boarding to? Boarding schools? Boarding schools. And they went from what, like grade 1 to 12? Yeah, they did one of those. That, or at yeah. least that was what the, uh, what the perception was. Uh, so they, they would have to be somewhere in that age range to be at the school. They weren't teachers yet. So, so all the original X-Men were in the same few class periods. Right. And, and also, like, they didn't, like, uh, they were, like, early 20s when the New Mutants got around. Like the new mutants were like, okay, Cannibal was like fifteen when he, they started. Rain, okay, yeah, like the X, the original X Men had the new mutants by like six years. But like, the thing with the Xavier School, yeah, because it's an accredited school, like you go there, you become it. You got your cop. You graduated high school, right? And you basically, and you got a college degree. Yeah, that's weird. Basically, oh, how I met Xavier is fifty-five. When 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 Cyclops was in grade twelve, I imagine Iceman was in grade ten, and then when Iceman was in grade twelve, Magic was in grade ten. So three years right. apart. So three, three, three. Yeah. That's how I kind of- Maybe. Uh, no, actually, it'd be no, no, less. But no, like when, yeah, it'd be less because, um, Iceman was eighteen. When like I- Iceman was full, like uh, by the, when the second generation X Men showed up, he had turned eighteen. So I would say like five years, like when Iceman was in was in 12th grade Ileana was probably in 6 cause... Oh wow. Okay, so so it would be more like 9 10 years between Cyclops and so so Magic might have been in like grade 1 or 2. <laughs> right, exactly. Like also Havoc, Havoc is the same age as I 
Havoc, Iceman, and uh, Polaris are all the same age. They're 35. Gabriel Summers. Gabriel Summers is like 29. My age. He chose. He's, he's afraid of turning 30. Because yeah. you gotta, you gotta remember though, when we first when we first uh, saw Cyclops and Havoc's uh, origin story, what happened with their parents in the, uh, the plane crash? They were already walking and talking. They were not toddlers. They I were already in school. <laughs> oh yeah. It's just, I'm like, wow, so how old was little Gabriel when he basically claimed claimed the Shi'ar realm and oh, he uh, was... stuck dead bird, death bird. Okay, uh, actually, really? no, no, actually, MJ, you, 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 uh, what you said, his mind, he, like, his body is 29, but in his mind... He's like, he's like thirteen. Oh my! Oh my! Whoa, whoa. Oh no! No, I said no, no, no. At net, by this point, sixteen. He's sixteen. What happened there? Because uh, he was. Remember, you got to remember, he was aged up. Like How? he was by who? By the Shi'ar. Was he sent through time or something? Like like so? No, 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 no. no. He was just so aged like- up genetically. So he's like a real baby brother, like a yeah. real, real baby brother. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, Cyclops and Havoc's mother was pregnant with him. It was like third month. Cyclops and everyone would have to be already be like 15 years old when, when Gabriel was born then? No, no, younger. I say eight and six. For him to be... 16 plus 6 that's 21 so no he would have to be the the, the, the the times aren't adding up unless Gabriel was kept in stasis or something he was he, like, he was in stasis because of uh, Professor X and Kokoa uh, alright and he was so okay so if he was aged up by the she, Shi'ar so so how did they find him? Oh, because remember, uh, when uh, the Shi'ar abducted the Summers family, yeah, Mrs. Summers was already pregnant. Yeah, and they, they basically took ripped, a, they and they took ripped a, him out of her. They took a uh, I'll say it PG wise. They took a concubine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they uh, they wanted um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Mutant, they wanted some mutant snoop snoop. But yeah, man, that's what uh, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to like really get it. Like, Xavier's well, in Hold on. So is that, you know. We have the elephant in the room here. Go for it. Max Eisenhart. Oh. He's... Uh, okay, he was born... Now, he's about 100 years old. Like... All right. Uh, like, you know, now, he's born in 1919, so he's, yeah, he's about 100, 103 years old. He, but he's you mean, Magneto, though. Um, how, he's been do you aged mean? a couple of times. Mm-hmm. That, that's and, one thing I want you. I want you to write like the the mental age of people as well as the age of their bodies, because like, like Xavier is like a twenty year old body right now. He, that is true. No, but the thing with Magneto, his powers kind of keep him young. That's something we have like anytime Ex- like he's explaining like please. okay the magneto sphere in our in our uh on our planet he gets he get he he gets power off of it and my and my theory is that it also keeps him young at, at least or young ish like he, at least he, he he might have an old body but it keeps his vitality young for sure. Exactly. All right. Yeah, because yeah. like for the original, for the first traits of sword, Magneto looked very much like this is how you should look at stuff. Like not, not a really old face, but a weathered face. Yeah, so, he's getting a lot. This is, head, this is head cannon for me, but like they're Homo Superior. I can't believe that Homo Superior. So yes, they're different because of the their powers. But I would find it really odd 
if they don't also have some form of longevity. Not permanent longevity, but like 200 years, 300 years. I would say that that they I mean, should Cyclops. I mean, Cyclops is a uh, like he has enough he has enough kids to like he he's okay. No. Nah. Right, well then, okay, so so apocalypse and miss in apocalypse and genesis 2000 years old range as old as the egyptian civilization really yeah. easy really easy there the entire second generation of mutants is thousands of years old yeah. unknown why apocalypse probably just formed a group of all the most powerful mutants of that generation and they all happen to have longevity Celine yeah. is I mean, like 10, she's 10,000 I thought she was recorded to have shown up in the ancient Roman times. Uh, yeah. No, she's like the, she's prior Roman. She's like she's like um, uh, the people the Roman religions are based off of, like right, the old, even older, like like uh, Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, so that um, and. Rave and Mystique and Destiny are essentially big, oh, they're almost the same age as Logan because Lo, they're all no, actually uh, Mystique is like 80. She's like 80. Her powers keep keep her looking a certain well, we I saw, like... saw Mystique, Destiny, and Sinister in like 1920. Yeah. So if it's if it's twenty twenty today, oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, ninety. Like she, but no, like but she's, again, over, she's over hundred years old. No, but she could die and be resurrected in a younger body. We don't fucking. Like That's it. true too. That's true. And, uh, yeah, and, sin- you're, you're, and you're, sinister's you're, a Victorian. Sin- sinister's a Victorian. You're, you're, that's why you're dating is mostly. I I'm more excited for the fact that I'll know like the the mental ages of people. Right, less than bodies because fucking resurrection kind of throws a lot of that out of the, the gate. Like like Wanda, she's basically lost fifty years of her lifespan. She's basically fifty years younger, or maybe not fifty. I don't know, but I don't know how long time spans work. But she's in like a ten year younger body now. Yep, there you go. Okay, you guys, it's uh we got new X new X books next week, X Force, new X Men. Sorry. And the final issue of Knights of X. Uh, hopefully we learn what the Siege of Perilous is. And hopefully it's something cool. Hopefully Cable comes back. More powerful no, than ever. No, it's going to be tepid because Teeny Howard's double. Apocalypse. Apocalypse shows no, up at the end. Imagine, imagine Cable. He's now if a man. If she so, brings Big Blue Mr. and Mrs. Apocalypse back, then she, then she might have my a, a attention again, <laughs> but I'm already like you're already double dipping trying to get all this money, which is you're right, get your money, but um your your Catwoman's tepid and the you, know, you are not the, a good writer, Miss. Uh, the art is good, but just go to the indie firms and train and train more. Jeez. Okay. Firms and train. I, I, I want to say something. So I, I, I want Cable to come back and have some type of power that when Destiny looks at him, she sees the future and is like, "Oh my God, he's gonna fix everything." Like I, I want her just to be like, because she, she hates Cable. So I want yeah. Cable to be what she needs. That just be hilarious. Okay, that, I want to see that too. All right, Master Yarl, Corey on fourteen oh seven. We connect the dots so you don't have to. We don't use head cannon. Everything works. All right. We'll see you soon.